Hey Lifer Nation, I'm Christian, the new 707 intern for the summer. Uh, welcome to Life Church, where faith is a journey, not a guilt trip. We're going to have fun together today, but there's one thing I want you to do. Grab one of these, the connection cards, so we can stay connected. Uh, fill it out and drop it off in the front lobby after worship. This is where we can stay connected uh, for the weeks ahead. Once you fill it out, drop it off. There's bags in the front. And you know, who doesn't want free stuff? Free swag bags. There's plenty of information in those bags and a free gift in there. If you're not here in person, connect with us on connecttolifechurch.com. And before the message starts, before we dive deep into the Word of God and be fed through the Bible, here's a quick recap of the things that we've done in the past month or so. second okay run out there run 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 Levi That was fun. Didn't, didn't you guys have a blast last weekend at the ballpark? That was unbelievable. And uh, I want to say thank you to our band and the tech and all the volunteers who pulled that off. Uh, we've never done that before. Never done worship. And I was preaching on top of the dugout. It was the craziest thing. We got to hear from uh, different loons players. And it, it was just a blast. Well, hey, welcome to Life Church. My name is John. It's so great to see you. Turn to someone near you and do an air high five and say good morning. Do a quick air high five. And I'll do an air high five to everybody online that's watching. So great to see you tune in online. Uh, so it's Memorial Day weekend. It's so nice outside. It is going to be so nice. And then tomorrow, it's going to be so hot. <laughs> So if you didn't believe in hell before, <laughs> tomorrow, Michigan. Uh, so we're getting ready next Sunday to uh, move to our summer times for June, July, and August. So starting next Sunday, whether you come in person or you tune in online, you get an extra 15 minutes here at our Saginaw location. 
That's an extra time to sleep, extra time to grab coffee and donuts. Mmm, donuts. <laughs> but starting next Sunday, our summer time here will be 11.15. That's so that I can spend some time over in Midland at Northwood University's Griswold Center, where we are going to begin having informational gatherings where we invite people from Sanford, Auburn, Midland to the Griswold Center, and we're just going to share our vision, our heart, our passion that will lead toward building a team and reopening our Midland location this fall. And part of uh, the idea last week with the ballpark was we were connecting with people. Families, individuals, households from the Midland area collecting their emails and we're continually pointing them towards the Griswold Center next Sunday. So you can be praying because we don't know if who's going to show up. If it's going to be two people, 20 people, 200 people. We have no idea, but we want to do it right and make sure that we have the infrastructure and the team before we reach out to reach people far from God. And maybe that's you today. Maybe you've gone through a rough week and today you're just looking for some refreshment. Even if you didn't go through a rough week, just scrolling through the news has been so disheartening this past week. So many headlines, so many heartaches. And the good news is that God is with us. God will never leave you. God will never turn his back on you. God will never defriend you on Facebook. God will never ghost you. Well, he'll holy ghost you, I guess. <laughs> but God will never turn his back on you. And I just want to share these words with you to encourage you this morning before we dive into the scriptures together. Because of what Jesus has done for you, you no longer have to live your life to get accepted. You live your life as one who is already accepted. You no longer have to live your life to get love. You live your life as one who is already loved. So it doesn't matter whether you are on top of the world or you are just barely dragging through the day. In Christ, you have a new name, a new destiny, a new inheritance, a new purpose. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And in 2 Corinthians 5, it tells us that because of Christ's Love, his never ending, never giving up, overflowing love for me. I am compelled to love others and serve others. It's what theologians for hundreds of years have called Missio Day. In fact, I got a little whiteboard up here. This is not a computer error, this is something new. <laughs> Cross your fingers, let's see if this works. Oh, check it out. Technology, eat that whole bail. Um, <laughs> Missio Dei. If you're taking notes, you might write this down. This is a theological term that has been bandied about for hundreds of years. It means mission of God. So if you remember the Blues Brothers movie, you got Jake Blues, you got Elwood Blues, and Jake just got sprung out of prison. And Elwood's like, we're on a mission from God. The Missio Dei is what we're all part of. This is what church is all about. We have a mission. Okay? So, so let me put it this way. The church doesn't have a mission. The mission has a church. The mission is to reach the lost at any cost. The mission is to help people far from God experience the love of God. And we just get to be part of the connecting point. 
appointing people to someone bigger than us. We don't have to have all the answers. God has all the answers. We are just uh, nobodies trying to tell everybody about somebody. That's the Missio Day. And I thought I would take a few minutes today to, to explain the Missio Day, the mission that God has for us, so that you understand why we do what we do. Turn to someone next to you and say, why do we do what we do? That's a great question. I used to ask that question growing up as a kid at a small country church where my dad was the pastor. I would ask that question. I'd be like, why do they dress up in choir robes every Sunday? It must be really hot under there. Do they wear shorts? What are they doing under there? <laughs> you know, vacation Bible school. It's a lot of fun for one week. Why don't we do that every Sunday? Why do we do what we do. And a lot of times what happens is, is we come up with an idea in church world, and, and then when it's successful, we just kind of keep running and running every year, running to the ground, until we completely forget why we started it in the first place. And it just becomes a, a program, a, an extra program in a cacophony of programs. And that's why a lot of church programs are mediocre. That's why a lot of pews, you know why it's called pews, it goes, whoo, whoo, smells like formaldehyde. And so before we start digging into Midland and, and, and building up Saginaw, um, we want to remind ourselves, why? Why do we do what we do? What is this mission? What is this passion? I don't think that the greatest threat to Christianity is anything that you see online like... Um, some people will say the greatest threat to the church is atheism. I don't have a problem with atheism. I mean, they ask a lot of great questions and bring a lot of great doubts to a very big God who is big enough to answer those questions. I don't think atheism is the issue. I think apatheism is what's facing the church. I just created a word. I don't know if that's a real word. I'm going to put it up on the screen, though. If it isn't a real word, I'm going to... Trademark it. Okay. Apathy is something. This whole thing of just, you know, oh, I can just sleep in. You know, I don't, I'm going to go do this. I don't need to be involved in church. You know, I, I've got this whole idea of just kind of sliding through life and never sucking the marrow out of our faith. There is much more to following Jesus than doing a simple genuflex and putting two coins in the offering plate. There's an adventure to jump into, this mission that we've been called to. In the Gospels, we've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four biographies of Jesus. And if you've got a Bible, or if you have a Bible app, you can turn on your Bible to Matthew 28. We have the mission that is shared in all for Gospels, and it's called the Great Commission. Boy, I'm loving this uh, drawing board. I might do this every week now. This is, see, look, I can make a little stick man. Hello. <laughs> now I'm holy. Okay, so uh, in Matthew 28, <laughs> verse 19, after the resurrection, you realize that the movement that started 2,000 years ago this movement called church, ecclesia, the called out ones, it started with 11 scared Jewish teenagers. And it was not a Bible that ignited their faith. They didn't even have a Bible. Okay, this wasn't, they, they were living this. This hadn't happened yet. By the way, if you're like trying to understand the scriptures and you're like, man, I want to, I want more of this in my life, but I don't know where to start. Next Sunday, we're starting a summer teaching series, June, July, and August. It's called Binge the Bible. Binge the Bible. We binge watch Stranger Things. We binge, Actually, you shouldn't watch Stranger Things. We, we binge watch Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? We're going to binge the Bible every Sunday. Uh, we're going to hit uh, a full book of the Bible, give you a Google zoom out, so next Sunday will be Genesis, the following will be Exodus, and then we're all going to slug through Leviticus together, okay? All of y'all. And then during the week, we're going to have on our website 
uh, daily devotionals for you, daily devotionals for your teenagers, to help you get the big picture uh, of what's happening. And if you stick with us, by the end of August, we will have hit the entire Old Testament in three months. Binge the Bible, right? It would be awesome. But they didn't have a Bible back then. It's not the Bible that fueled their faith. It was an experience. Think about it. They literally saw a dead man rise from the casket. And he was cooking breakfast with them. He was hugging them. He spent 40 days, the resurrected Christ did. It was an experience that ignited a movement of changed lives. And that experience was written down into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And at the end of his time here on planet Earth, as Jesus was getting ready to head back to the Father, in Matthew 28, verse 19, he gives what's called the Great Commission. It's not the Great Suggestion. This is our mission. This is his final words. In history, we always record the final words of someone before they depart. These are the words of Jesus in Matthew 28, verse 19. He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you, and I will be with you. Until the end of the age, Jesus said, I've got your back. So, Matthew 28, 19. What's the big key verb? Go. That's what we're called to do, not to sit. <laughs> we are not theological lapdogs. Stay, good boy. You stay right there. Holy Spirit, come and get you going. No. <laughs> we are told to go. And so sometimes people say, well... You know, I like God, and I'm starting to figure out my faith. I just need to pray about if I want to get involved. No, you don't need to pray about what God has already declared. Jesus calls all of us to go and be viral with our faith and to baptize people. That's why we celebrate life change through baptism. But he doesn't just do this in Matthew. He also does this in Mark. If you've got your Bible, open up to Mark chapter 16, verse 15. In Mark 16, verse 15, Jesus says, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. So you've got Matthew, he says, Go. You've got Mark, he says, Go. You think Luke's got a word? You better believe it. Sweet, you're Bet your sweet bippy. Look at Luke chapter 24, verse 47. At the very end of the gospel of Luke, the resurrected Christ starts preaching through the scriptures, and he ends by saying repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in my name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Can I show you something really cool? This is really cool. And I can only do this because I have my little uh, Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> you got to come to Life Church. We got a life-size Etch-a-Sketch. Okay. So the, the book of Luke and the book of Acts were written to be a, a two-parter. Okay. They're written by Dr. Luke. The book of Luke is the life of Jesus. The book of Acts is the life of the early church. And they kind of mirror each other. If you want a really sweet Bible study, go through and read Luke. And then read straight into Acts. The Luke-Acts narrative. And it's really cool because in Luke, Jesus starts out in Luke chapter 1 at the, at, at the edges of Israel. And then he's moving through Judea, Samaria, and he's always heading toward Jerusalem. That's where the cross happens, right? 
And then the book of Acts picks up at the resurrection and it starts in Jerusalem and it goes through Judea, Samaria. And at the very end of Acts, Acts chapter 28, it's to the ends of the earth. So you can see this progression of Jesus going towards Jerusalem in Luke and then in Acts, the church goes out to the world. Isn't that cool? All these little behind the scenes hints throughout the scriptures. So that's the Luke Acts narrative. It doesn't stop there. The book of John, you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 20, verse 21, Jesus is resurrected. He's talking to his followers and he says, as the father has sent me, so I send you. So check it out. What you see happening in scripture in the book of John is the father sends the son. The son will send the spirit. That's Acts chapter 2. And the spirit will send the church. That's us. That is the missio day. That's the mission. It's not that the church has a mission. The mission has a church. This is God's plan for rescuing the world. When you look at all the sour news headlines, when you look at all the missteps and the heartaches in our own lives, God has a solution. He has provided an antidote to everything that's wrong in this world. That antidote is called gospel, good news. The good news that Jesus came in our place, the perfect substitute. He was compelled by love to bear the wrath of God at the cross. Then he rose, so he's conquered sin, sickness, and death. And he says, come follow me. Let's go on an adventure, a mission together. You are the ecclesia, that's the Greek word for church. So we're not here, church, to just make ourselves feel good and pat ourselves on the back and say we're the holy ones. We're not here to, to, to protect ourselves from the outside world. We are called to go out into the world, to penetrate the world, to reach the lost at any cost. We get a great commission statement in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, in John, and then in the book of Acts. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The book of Acts is all about the early church. It's one of my favorite books of the Bible. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, as Jesus is ascending into heaven, he says, You, you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses because a Bible didn't ignite their faith, an event ignited their faith, the resurrection. So you are witnesses. I'm alive. What do witnesses do? They testify. So last week when we were at Dow Diamond in Midland, we had some of those Great Lakes Loons baseball players come up and they talked about their faith journeys. What were they doing? They were testifying. When you listen to some like old school gospel music and you know, somebody in the background go, testify! That's what they're talking about. Acts 1.8. You will be my witnesses. And he says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So this ecclesia is not meant to stay in Jerusalem. The church is not a holy huddle of us four no more. We're protected in here. They're bad people out there. That's not what the church is about. It's a messy, organic movement of changed lives that, that goes past Jerusalem and spills out into the world. And so for the early Christians, they would do this. They would breathe in the world, inhale the world, exhale the gospel. Wherever they went, they would spread love, peace, servant-heartedness. Inhale the world, exhale the gospel. 
We've got lots of um, little Facebook groups for our church that you can find on our website, lifechurchmichigan.com. And one of the groups we have is Bible study tools, where I'll just kind of share some deeper theological thoughts throughout the week, just little nuggets to chew on. And this past week, I came up on this amazing quote that talked about the early church in the book of Acts and how the first 300 years, it was illegal to be a Christian because to the Romans, if you had a god, you would have a statue of your god and you would worship your statue god. And the Christians didn't have a statue because we have a ten, one of the Ten Commandments that says you shall not have a, an image of the Lord your God. And so the Romans believed that the Christians were atheists because they would worship a god they couldn't see and they would eat their god and drink his blood. You know, it was really weird for the first 300 years to the Romans, right? And yet the early church grew like bunny rabbits. And I read this quote and I shared it on the, the Bible Study Tools Facebook group page saying that it was not uh, the buildings that attracted Christians because they didn't have any buildings. It was not their Bibles that attracted Christians because everyone was illiterate. They didn't have Bibles. Um, it wasn't their wonderful music. It wasn't uh, their paintings because they didn't have any paintings. What attracted people for the first 300 years of Christianity was that Christians really did love their enemies. That's what changed the world. That Jesus died for his enemies. All of us were enemies of the cross. And yet, he became sin for us. And so the early Christians would love people, serve people. They were compelled by love even if it was their enemy. And that's why the early church grew. Because they were so different from the rest of the world. And so we've got this mission that we get to be part of. And nowadays, when we go to church, it sometimes feels like it's missing that flavor, that saltiness that Jesus talked about in Matthew 5 when he said that you are the salt of the earth. Back in the day, Roman soldiers were not paid in pesos or dollars. They were paid in salt because they didn't have refrigerators. If you had salt, then you could conserve your food. Or salt would bring out the flavors in the food. So salt was very, very useful. It was very valuable. And that's where we get the word salary. And in Matthew 5, what does Jesus say? He says, you are the salt of the earth. The church is supposed to be sprinkling. We're supposed to be a, a, a light, a city on the hill that loves people when they least expect it, least deserve it, that welcomes everyone, saying, everyone's welcome, nobody's perfect. So you fast forward 2,000 years to where we are now, and we get to spread life in our region. You were placed here in the Saginaw, Bay City, Midland area on purpose, for a purpose, with a purpose, your purpose is the mission of God to reach the lost at any cost. If you're sitting there going, man, you know, I've got a job, or I've got a school I go to, or I've got a relationship, but I just feel unfulfilled, you won't feel fulfilled until you get busy about the Father's business. That's what you were made for. That's why you have an income, that's why you have an education, that's why you have an opportunity every day to be the church. And so 2,000 years after the time of Christ, that's, that's us. That's life church. We get to love on people, to be with people. And the way we do it is Sundays. We do it in kids ministry and we do it in teen ministry. And that's it. We keep it simple. Instead of having a ton of programs that we've forgotten why we started the programs, we narrow the focus and do a few things really well. 
And so Sundays, we want to worship God, we want to sit under God's word, and make the environment inviting to people who are far from God. Kids ministry, we want to create the best hour in a kid's week. Why? Because if you win the kids, you win. I've got five kids. And if they really want to go to the park, or if they really want to go to Chuck E. Cheese, it doesn't matter what my desires are. As the adult, I'm going to take them there because I want my kids to be happy. And if my kids love going to church, you better believe that's part of our outreach strategy. Teens, oh my goodness, is there a demographic in greater need of the love of Jesus Christ today than teenagers? I got to introduce you to someone. We have a crackerjack of a college student from down in the Detroit area who is spending his summer months here with us at Life Church, pouring into students, mentoring students, learning the ropes of a growing church. His name is Christian Hang, and I think you all should hear from him for a minute. You want to meet Christian? Yeah. Christian, come on out here. Let me grab a microphone. Christian, I'm going to let you have the stage, and if you get really wild, there's a whiteboard in the back here. All right. I don't think I'll need that. All right, so my name is Christian. Um, as John said, I'm the new intern for the summer. Um, I'm excited. This is a new environment for me. Um, I was always in Detroit. Uh, I never really moved around a lot. I mean, I traveled, but yeah, this is the first time moving out. By myself, by my parents, and my family. But a little story uh, why I'm here. Uh, I grew up in a Christian name, uh, household. We went to church and everything. But I wasn't really involved in the youth or any programs, really. I was just there because, you know, your parents want you to go to church and just follow what they are because you, you know, be obedient to your, your parents. And that's what God said be obedient to your parents. And, you know, that's what we did. We, Went to church, we were in the kids' room just playing, but I never really learned anything. Because I just, because reading, I, I was never, I never really liked reading uh, as kids, because, you know, school makes you read, but reading is important. But anyways, um, fast forward to, I was around 12, we came back to the church, uh, my, my dad's home church, and that's where I was baptized. Uh, Within like a, a year after we were there, and even even after that, I still didn't really want to be with the youth, you know, or like be at church really, because you know, in in the sometimes in the chapel, you don't really understand what's going on. You just hear words coming up, and you get bored, and you just you know sometimes you fall asleep. I admit it, I fall asleep in I fell asleep in chapel before a lot of times, but. As I grew older, um, around my senior year, my last uh, my last semester in high school, I was like, you know, I'm gonna try this youth thing out. My parents said, I should go, and I see everybody having fun, and I was like, all right, let's see what this is all about. And, you know, it was good. It was fun. I had a lot of friends. I, uh, I learned a lot about who God is, even if it's the basics of you know, John 3.16, what he done for us. And, Ever since then, a year later, you know, I graduated and everything. I was going for engineering, but then that semester, God was like, you know, I don't think engineering is good for you, but I think, you know, you should go this way. And I switched my major to Youth and Family Ministries, where I'm currently at, at Rochester University, down in Rochester Hills. Uh, and now, looking back, why I'm at students, really, is I want to give them something that I didn't have when I was younger. Um, if I didn't set my foundation early or at that time, because as you know, when you go to college, a lot of people tend to not go to church. They tend to follow whoever their friends are at school or whatnot, or they've set their foundation in work. But I set my foundation in you know, Christ and the church, and I realized that you know I missed a lot when I was younger. I missed... Uh, making friends. I miss the memories that my friends had that they told me about. And that's why I want to give kids here 
a chance to realize that like, it's not just your parents want you to come here. It's you know they want to give you something that they can't give you. It's, you know who God is. God is uh, something that you have to learn on your own as well. They could push you to go to church. They could push you to go to youth group, but it's really a relationship that you have to give to God. And I recently, like two weeks ago, I told the kids that, uh, no, it was, it was this Friday that he wants a relationship. He doesn't want you to go like blindly and be like, all right, I want to be here, or I'm here because my parents want me, but it's because you really want to be here. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's why I'm here today. Um, that's maybe why John allowed me to be intern here. You teach the kids at 707. Um, and hopefully I see more kids. We have a good group. We have a good group. Uh, they fellowship. Um, I love fellowshipping with the kids. I love learning their stories. And I want their stories to be a part of who we are here at Life Church. And you know, they pour, we pour into each other to see who God, what God's uh, story is. You know, God's story is not done yet. Uh, this church is not done yet. And, you know, if we're still alive, God says the time for us. So, also, true story, the, the whole reason we brought Christian on board for the summer is it's part of our secret plan to have all Asians taking over the church here. <laughs> That's just a joke. I'm from India, you know, I'm from India. I don't know where Christian's from. Brooklyn. Um, so listen, that's what we're about. That's the mission of God. That's what you stepped into when you stepped in here or tuned in. You're part of something bigger than yourself, and the ball is in your court about getting more into the agenda of God. So keep it super simple. Here's, here's where we're going going forward. Um, new Sunday times, new summer times begin next week. The summer times are 9.30 at Midland, and that's a gathering uh, of folks that we're sharing information about our church, our hearts. So it's not like we're going to be preaching the sermon that's here on Sunday in Saginaw. It's going to be a completely different ball game. But you're welcome to come out if you're from the Midland area. In fact, we need you to come. And if you're from the Midland area, let people know what God is doing at uh, Northwood University. Then we'll be here at 1115 for our new series, Binge the Bible. And we have a wonderful website, lifechurchmichigan.com, that has all the details. If you go to the website and do the backslash binge, we're going to be posting information, uh, devotionals, extra content that goes deeper into the Bible each week to help feed your faith this summer. That way, if you go on vacation or you go up north, you miss a Sunday, you can go to our website and get caught up. So when you step back on campus, you step back into the story of the Bible that we're telling. We're gonna go through the Old Testament in three months. It's gonna be great. For the kids, not only are we gonna do kids ministry on Sundays, but we have an opportunity to do something special this June something that we are calling Summer Blast. It's a week-long kids camp evenings, the week of June 20th, here at our Saginaw location. And the theme for this year is Mission Under the Deep Sea. So your kiddos that are rising K through 5th graders will be welcome here the week of June 20th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. We're going to transform the space into an underwater area. Moms, dads, parents, you get two hours to yourself. You can go to Meyer or to Target without kids bugging you. You're welcome. <laughs> or you can serve. There's ways to serve, too, during that time. The last night, the Friday night, we're going to do a block party outside for the whole family with inflatables and food trucks. That'll be a ton of fun. All the details and registration is right there on our website, lifechurchmichigan.com. And for the teens, we have what we call Best Week Ever. That's coming up this July. 
We've already booked a band to come up from Nashville, led by our buddy Erskine. He'll be here for the week. <laughs> Pouring into our teenagers. And then we have a guest speaker uh, who will be here for the week, pouring into our students. For rising 6th through 12th graders, you can register your teams and learn more on our website, lifechurchmichigan.com slash best week ever. All of this is fueled by you, by your prayers, by your invites, by your service, by your generosity. And we're just so thankful to have amazing lifers like you, both here in person and online. So I'm going to close this out with prayer. The band is going to come up for one last song, and then we'll have an opportunity to respond through music and through the giving of our tithes and offerings. If you're new today, please do me a favor and leave your wallet in your pocket. We're not after your money. We're excited to have you here. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this church, part of a 2,000 year movement of changed lives. God, we are part of a legacy that began not with a story, but with an experience, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, what a privilege, what an honor it is to be your people, to be your friends, to be your servants. God, remind us again, renew us within with a passion for the purpose, the mission of God that you've given to your church. May we be a people who faithfully pray. May we be a people who serve. May we be a people who invite online and in person. And may we be a people who give, not because we have to, but because we get to. We get to be part of a movement of changed lives. Thank you, God, for blessing us abundantly. And we pray all these things in Jesus. As we come to a close, now is your opportunity to partner with what God is doing here at Life Church. Now, those of you who are here and are guests for the first time, please, please leave your wallet in your pocket. We are not after your money, but we would still love for you to go to connecttolifechurch.com and fill out that connection card. Those of you who are wanting to uh, financially support what God is doing here, you can do so in many ways. You can do it on Venmo, you can do it at lifechurchgift.com, or for those of you who are on site, we have baskets that are available that you can drop your offering and your tithes as you walk out the door. We really appreciate you supporting what's going on here and allowing us to seize the moment just like Peter and continue to share Jesus with those that God puts in our path.